afternoon, my brothers and sisters. We are here on this this Wednesday evening for our Wednesday night Bible study, and we are indeed and excited on tonight uh, because we're going to be talking about accepting Jesus on tonight. Accepting Jesus, and we'll be coming out of the Book of John, the third chapter, verses fourteen through thirty. Through 36. A very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, we're going to be dealing with some issues that we have to deal with in life on tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, because you allowed us to see another Wednesday night. Now, Father, we ask the Lord that you reveal to us the mysteries of your word on this evening, Lord, that will challenge us in our thinking, Lord, that will lead us in the right path that you will have us to be in. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have, uh, watching the news, we see the increase in violence and we see uh, children being killed and we are seeing uh, murders being risen in, in, in our cities across the nation and, and we're seeing things and we're seeing uh, tornadoes coming and, and, and killing a lot of folks and, and destroying homes and somebody might have the question, why? Why would a God uh, of sovereignty or why would a God allow certain things to happen? But we want you to know that all things shall happen, and this too shall pass. And we know that God hasn't forgotten us. We know that nothing happens without God knowing about it. It's all according to his will and his plan. Accepting Christ is our subject. John 3, verses 14 through 36. But before we get into our scripture tonight, I want to talk about um, rebellion. Rebellion. Uh, a lot of things are happening in the world simply because people have rebelled against God. People have rejected God. People don't believe in God anymore. And uh, we, we, we seem to have this question all the time when things, calamities happen. Where is the church? The church is where it's supposed to be. The church is where God has placed it to be. Uh, a lot of people say, well, the church isn't doing enough. But when the church tried to uh, guide and lead and guide you in the path of righteousness or preach the word to you or teach the word and tell you what you cannot do. We don't want the church to be involved. We don't want to be the church to be involved in our social issues that we have in our nation as we're voting. We don't want the church to be involved in certain key things, but just as soon as some calamity happens, as soon as some group uh, gets shot or, or something bad happens, we ask the question, where is the church? Well, the church is here. The church has always been here. And the church has been doing that which God has called us to do. Accepting Christ is the problem. And rebellion is another issue that we have among our young people, old people, and middle-aged folks. And it has always been since the beginning of time, man has rebelled against God. Another word I want to rebellion is an act of violence or open resistance to an established government or ruler. And so we all have rebelled in certain ways, in certain facets of our lives, but we got to be pulled back under the suggestion of God and, and allow him to lead and guide us so that we don't have rebellious spirit. Rebellious spirit also calls us to be stubborn. Uh, stubborn is the refusal to move or change in one's opinion. How, just think about it. What opinions have you been stubborn in? You've been hard headed stiff there. Uh, that we just won't change, we won't listen to nobody, we want to do it the way we want to do it, and we res uh, resist, which is part of rebellion again. And we resist the right things to do. We resist that which uh, our rulers have set before us to do, and we fight against it because we have somewhat a rebellious and stubborn spirit. Uh, as we get into our John 3, uh, I want to read something that we had talked before. We talked about 1 Samuel 15 and how Saul was rejected of God because God, because Saul rebelled against God. And, 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 and God calls him to lose his anointing. God calls another king to be chosen in his place. In 1 Samuel 15 and 22 and verse 23 it says, And Samuel said, Have the Lord as a great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of the ram. Oh, everybody wants to give praise. Everybody wants 
Everybody to be in church, but nobody want to be in church. Nobody want to obey God. Nobody want to, 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 to allow God to lead them in their lives. Nobody want to take anything out of their lives that is incorrect or in opposition to God. We, we, we want to keep everything and do everything that we want to do because we're, we're rebellious and we're stubborn. But that brings about certain things. God turns us over to certain things. And in the 23rd verse it says, For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. In the beginning, Adam and Eve rejected the word of God when they ate of the tree that they wasn't supposed to eat of. In the beginning, when uh, uh, Cain and Abel came along, and there was a murder there, but one brother killed the other one, and, and, and it went so far that God said he repented that he had even made man, and he sent a flood and, and destroyed man of that time, and but saving Noah and his family. And so I want you to understand that all these calamities that are going on, that's when that's the, the, the time that we need to look at ourselves, look at our, our opinions, and see do we line up with the word of God, see do our opinions line up with the word of God, and stop calling on the church to do something when we are the church. God's people is the church. It's not the building, it is the people. And so therefore, we have to make sure that we are in line with God's spoken word. Now, in John, John 3, uh, the Bible tells us in the beginning of John 3 that Nicodemus had a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus told Nicodemus, uh, you must be born again. And Nicodemus had a problem with that and so on. And, and we understand that a lot of times we forget that we must be born again. We must have a change of mind and a change of heart. Now, my brothers and sisters, we can't do that on our own. We need the aid of the Holy Spirit to help us to remind us that which God has said in his word. And so we pick it up as 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 Jesus is telling uh, Nicodemus here in verse 14, he says, And Moses, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must be, must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The perishing is not for the physical world, because we all are going to have to go to the grave one day. The perishing is the, the, the perishing of our soul or our spirit. Uh, we shall live with Christ and have everlasting life on a new earth. For John said in, in, in Revelation 21, there will be a new earth. And so and, and the old world is going to be destroyed, death hell, and, and the grave is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. We won't see that perishing if we're in Christ Jesus, if we have the renewed uh, thinking, and uh, we are not stubborn, and we are not rebellious, because all rebellion, all of that's going to be thrown into the lake of fire with burning forever and ever. But I want to be a part of the, the what John said, he saw the, the new city coming down and dawn as a, as a wife or a husband. And I want to see the new city where there won't be no more crying, no more dying, no more suffering, no more tears and glory, as we often say. And I want to see, be able to be a part of that. And, and the only way we're going to be a part of that is we have to allow God to break us down, to remold, to reshape. We can't get down on our own understanding. And this is all Jesus is saying to, 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 to Nicodemus tonight. And then he says... And whosoever believe in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There, there is a problem with people that want to have everlasting life that try to separate God out of that. They want to live a happy life, but they want to try to separate God and live their happy life. You can't live a happy life because of sin, because of the original sin of Adam and Eve. We have to see death, we have to see certain calamities, we go through certain things in life 
God has set a place for us. He has reconnected with us through Christ Jesus. When he, when he died and he rose again, his blood and his suffering, he was the ultimate sacrifice for us. So that we could be in the right relationship with God now. Now his spirit has been left here. The comfort of uh, the Holy Ghost, as you may say, has been left here and he's inside of us. He's leading and guiding us. Not that all the time that we would be spared from the things of life. The things of life shall happen. But we must know that he's preparing us for the eternal life that is to come. And in, all, and in order for us to receive that eternal life, we have to not be rebellious and not be stubborn, but be broken. Broken in the spirit. Broken with the spirit or with the Holy Spirit that he can mold us and shape us into what he wants us to be. And then in verse 17 it says... For God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved from what? I'm glad you asked that question. Saved from yourselves. Saved from, saved from sin. Saved from mediocrity. Saved from, from doing things uh, the wrong way. That's how uh, in, in, in the Old Testament when the flood was set, it was because of sin. Man had disobeyed God so that God had repented that he had made man and he allowed a flood to come to, 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 to zoom man, to, to, to take man out of the world. But he allowed a remnant to live and man did the same thing <laughs> over again to the point where he had to send Christ. But Christ was the better sacrifice and he made it uh, possible that we won't have to be destroyed uh, in that way, in that fashion again. And then it says in verse uh, 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not what? Condemned. But he that believeth not is already what? Condemned. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, condemnation that the light come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because of their deeds were evil. This is what we're seeing on the, on the TV. This is what we're talking about in our uh, uh, young people, and our middle-aged people, and older people. Everybody's trying to kill one another. Drugs and, and sex and violence. It's, this is the course of the world. This was not designed for the church. If you are doing certain things that are not in God's word, it isn't designed for you. It is there to destroy you. And this is what we're seeing in the world. And everybody wants the church to fix it. The church can't fix it. Jesus came not to fix it, but to give us a better way of seeing life. But if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't accept him as the Christ, if you don't accept him as the better sacrifice, you come to church don't mean a thing. You might as well stay at home and do what you were doing. Because you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior in order for us. I heard some people say, well, well, I, I, I'm in the church. I've given my life to Christ. And I like doing certain things. Well, you really haven't had a, been, had a rebirth. You haven't been born again. Because if you've been born again, you won't do the things that you used to do anymore. Now, we all fall, but we get up. And Christ gets us up with the Holy Spirit. And he leads and guides us and it seals us. And if we would allow it to, but we have to accept it first. Uh, then he says, for everyone that does evil, hated the light. When you see men and women doing evil, it's because they hated the light. This is Jesus talking. This is, the, this is what John has recorded that Jesus said. And he said, everyone that does evil, hated the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that, come, that, that does true, come into the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that are wrought, that, that, that they are wrought in God, meaning that they have changed. If you say you're a Christian, then be a Christian. Your life should amplify that you are a Christian. We all have struggles in life of, of things that we should not be doing, or things that we should not be saying, or places that we should not go. We struggle with that. But we have to let it go and come to the light. Come to the light of understanding. Come to the light that God, light inside of you might be manifest. That means that the world may see it. That people can see your life change. Uh, 
It's not that the church has failed. It's you individually that are not doing what God has told you to do. And uh, there's a struggle there. And that's something that we, uh, as human beings, we struggle with all our lives. It's placing the blame on everything else. On my upbringing, on my mother, on my father, on my, because I was, I was black or I was white or I just didn't have the money. I, didn't, I wasn't born with the silver spoon. So this is why I, I drink. This is why I do what I do. Simply, we place the blame on everybody else instead of taking the blame upon ourselves and giving it to Christ. Because the only way we're going to change and come up out of certain things, you want our young people to stop running around doing drive-bys, doing drugs, and playing games, not working, you want them to pull their pants up? They have to know Christ. And the only way they're going to know Christ, they, they have to accept God's word. And the only way they're going to accept God's word, bring them into church, ain't going to save them. They just put them around the fire. They, 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 they heard it long enough, maybe they'll change. But they still have to accept Christ for their, for, their, for their soul salvation. They have to accept Christ in the pardon of their sins. They have to want to do better. Old people, young people, middle-aged people, we have to accept Christ individually. Just like Nicodemus went to Christ and Christ told him, you must be born again. That is for all of us. Each and every one of us. We must be born again, have a change of mind, have a change of heart. We can't do it. The Holy Spirit does that for us once we have accepted Christ as our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And then in verse 23, he says, After these things came Jesus to his disciples in the land of Judea, and they uh, there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also baptized them, Aaron and Salome, near Salome, because there was much water there. They came and were baptized. But John was not yet cast into prison. For uh, there, then there arose a question between John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptized all men come to him. And John answered and said, I am a man receiving nothing except it be given from heaven. Ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not Christ. But I am sent before him. We understand that we can't put Christ where we want him to be. He is by himself. We, we understand that John bear witness to him. And that, that, that question came up. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Christ that's baptizing over here? And, and you baptize him. We, we know who you are, but we don't know who he is. So he's introducing the Jesus to them. He's letting them know that I'm not the Christ. The man whom you see is the Christ. And because he says it, uh, he says it here, he says it uh, in verse 29. He that has the bride is the, is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and hears him uh, rejoices greatly because the bridegroom for us. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. This would be helpful for us that we can understand that Christ must increase and we must dis decrease. We can't run off of our desires, our earthly desires, our earthly wants. We must allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, to show us the way, because we don't see the way clearly all the time. And then it says in verse 31, He that cometh from above is above all, and uh, all he that is of the earth is earth, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And he and what he has seen and heard that he testifies. And no man received his testimony. He's letting them know where Jesus comes from. He's letting them know he's a man. He was born here. He, he come from here. But he was letting them know that Jesus is the Son of God. He that that has received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. For, for he whom God has set for he whom God has sent speaketh the word of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loved his Son and given, given and has given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide on him. Now my brother.
brothers and sisters, when we have accepted Christ, we have everlasting life. When we have accepted Christ and the pardon of our, our sins, and we have accepted the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, we belong to Christ. Now, when we talk about we talk about the wrath of God, when you are outside of God's kingdom, anything can happen. You don't have the right to eternal life. You have right to eternal damnation. And so we understand that we are, we're working to make it to heaven, not to go to hell or to the pit. So we understand that things that we see are going on in our lives is the course of this world. So we have to keep our mind, our thought patterns, uh, our desires, and we have to make sure that we keep our faith and don't lose our faith because of what we see in this life. There's more to come. I've often said, if you just go on and, and read Revelation and, and get an understanding about all the, the calamities that shall happen in the book of Revelation and, and understand that we haven't seen those things yet. We, we're falling out and giving up faith before those things even happened yet. And so, but as those things, the books, different seals are open up and those different calamities are, are going to happen, we got to be ready to go away from here when Christ comes back so that we don't see the fulfillment of, Re of, of Revelation while we're here in the land of the living. We want Christ to come on back so that we can be in his kingdom and so that we want to be right and be ready for, for wherever he is, we shall be also. So I hope I was helpful to you on this evening, learning uh, to accept Christ or just accepting Christ, accepting Jesus. If we can accept Jesus at his word, as John has said at the end of, of, of John 3, he talked about he come from heaven. He speak of heavenly things because it come from heaven. If we can understand that Jesus was sent from heaven down to the earth to redeem man back to God, that means to set man's soul back in the right relationship with God. If we can understand that and, and, and accept that, that that's why he come and he allowed the Holy Spirit to come down that we can be in rightful relationship with God, that we can be ready for the eternal uh, glory that he has set for us where the streets are paved with gold, that we can see the new heavens and the new earth and be excited about it. And we don't have to worry about the second death once we have been ushered into the, to the kingdom of God. And so we, 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 we admonish you tonight not to lose your faith, but to hold on to your faith. Don't worry. Don't let the, these things you see going around and about the different cities and, and people are talking about there is no God, that there is no Jesus. Jesus what didn't exist. You believe what the word said, not what man has, is telling you in this season, in this time. Because man has a different course than the course that God has set before us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this session that you have allowed us to have on tonight. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, that you will go by, Lord, the this, this sick and the shedding, in, Lord, that you will go by, Lord, those bereaved families, Lord, those, somebody maybe have lost their job, Lord, somebody in, this, in distress on this evening, Lord, we ask the Lord that you, you help them right now, Lord, send your spirit, Lord anoint them afresh, Lord. Though somebody has given up on life, Lord. Something that's happened, Lord, to, to touch their faith, Lord, that, 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 that weaken them, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you would bring them back and touch them, Lord, in a mighty way, in the name of Jesus. We bind the hands of the enemy, Lord, that he won't have no victory in their life. In Jesus' name, we ask him, Lord, all these things. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May the peace of our Lord and Savior lead and guide you all the days of your life. God bless you.